Mower bag time again, I've got a bunch of items here. I've also got this big review item here. This could be interesting, we'll check this out last. So make sure we stick around, but we'll look through all this stuff. I know there's some other really interesting things in here, so make sure you stick around for that. Let's start with this one. If it's your first time here, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's an IC pin straightener. I actually got one of these somewhere already. Somewhere. Do you think I can find it? I've been trying to find it for months. <laughs> and I've got one. I've got another one now. These were surprisingly hard to find. And the one I could find, this one, was surprisingly expensive. It's almost like they've gone out of fashion or something. Anyway, this does uh, join line IC pin straightening. So you put an IC in there which has got pins which are splayed out, which is how they usually come from new. Put them in there, give it a squeeze and it will straighten them out. So then you can put them straight into a circuit ball pin out or into an IC socket or whatever you're using. And this is the wide one as well, so it's got wide and narrow. Same deal. An option was to actually 3D print my own from Thingiverse, there's, there's stuff on there. You know, people have designed their own and made them available. And to be honest, I, I mean, I could have done that, but I've wanted a proper one without messing around, having to build one. If I had trouble finding this one, or I've really, really bought at the price, then I would have made one, but there won't be links for this because they're just too damn hard to find. MagSafe Tested Deluxe. What's this? I've got extras. I purchased this and it looks like the place I purchased this from, oh, I'll tell you all about it in a second, has given me a bit of an extra deal. So, Harold, who is the CMI Zapper um, Tire Sears designer, he does all these um, Apple repair gadgets. If you've watched Paul Daniels' channel, he does a, the MacBook repair. You'll see him using a lot of his equipment as well because he sends him stuff. And I've featured him previously as well when I'm doing the GPU disable modifications on some of the earlier MacBooks, like the 1279, whatever it is. Can't remember the numbers now. He made those little chips which he disables the GPU on those devices which have bad GPUs. Gets you a working machine again. He makes lots of different products. And this one here is a MagSafe tester. The theory is you can plug a MagSafe into it and it will tell you what it is. Whether it's a real one, whether it's a fake one, because you get Chinese clones and what have you. I've got a MagSafe cable over here, which is literally just a cable plugged into my power supply. So let's hook this up and see what it thinks of it. Okay, so I've got a USB cable here. I mean, it, it did supply one with it. I've got a cable here, which is a short one, but I've got a longer cable. I've got a USB supply off to the side here. So let's plug this in. Here we go. MagSafe tested by Chipmunk International. So it's doing this boot up sequence. Connect to MagSafe charger. Okay, let's do that. Testing. Chip is fake. <laughs> yes. So that's not surprising because it's just a cable going to my power supply. But then also came up with this, which is MS1, MagSafe 1, 85 watt. And it's giving you the actual uh, voltages as well. 18.6 volt, which is what I'm getting straight from the power supply, basically. Well, 81.5 or so. So the L and N are to do with the loading on the power supply. So what it does, it checks the actual output from the power supply, from the MagSafe. If it's under load, it will tell you what the voltage is. If there's no load, it will tell you what the voltage is. Now, apparently, a good, like a real genuine Apple MagSafe one, will actually turn the voltage off. There's in like three volts apparently on this one, this example. So I'll turn the voltage off if it's not actually being used. So I'll protect it. But this one doesn't seem to do that because it's just a cable. That's that part. We've got sitting there. So I wanted to get that on chest chargers when I do have Apple chargers lying around. I've bought lots of Apple chargers from China. They look real, but are they? Probably not. Um, so I wanted to get that. Harold from Chipmunk has generously sent me an extra piece. So he sent me stuff before, I've got like a little tester here. Um, I think the thing I've actually got my power supply, I've got a little five volt jack of power supply over here. Let's pull it out, I'll show you. Pull it out, there we go. So this thing here, same also how it sent me, which is really handy. Plug in the power supply and get a five volt jack on your front of your power supply. This is a USB tester. You plug it into a USB port and you've got these indicators which tell you the activity of the USB port. So it's got whether you've got power or not, um, whether you've got a true five volt supply or not. In case it's under voltage, it might be like a 4 volt output or something like that. That will tell you if it's wrong. And it's also tells you if you've got activity. You'll see Paul Daniels using this quite a bit. He uses these a lot when he's doing his testing because you plug it into the port and try to boot up and see if there's any life from the CPU. 
because this will tell you. So that is a nice one to send me that too. So there will be links down below for these. Make sure you check those out. Well, those are crammed in here, weren't they? This is a bunch of ESP32 dev kit version one. I use these particular boards a lot in my projects. Anything I build, I'm, you know, if I need Wi-Fi or whatever, you, um, I use an ESP32. I've used the ESP 826s as well, but I prefer the 32s, and I've got a footprint design for these and stuff like that. So these are easy to use in the Arduino IDE or many other IDEs that are available. I'm just checking all the pins because they weren't packaged particularly well. These ones are bent. They straighten out fine. But yeah, handy things to have. You know, when you're doing microcontroller stuff, it pays to have a stock of them, especially if it's one you use a lot. So I use these a lot. I have loads of these already. I've got two different versions of these. It's a 32 pin, I think it's a 36 pin is the other one. It's got extra extra pins, it's got a different pin out on it and stuff like that. These are 32 pin ones and I definitely prefer these. One thing that these do have, I'll give you a little tip. These particular modules, when you're programming them, usually the very first time you're programming them, they work fine. But then when you try and program them after that, you have to hold down the boot pin, I think it was, I think it was a boot pin you had to press, in order to get the IDE to actually start communicating with it and actually uploading a sketch to it. So one trick I use for these is on the enable pin up here and the ground pin over here is I actually attach a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor between the enable and the ground pin over here. I just basically put some sleeving on the positive lead of the capacitor, lay the capacitor down over here, run the wire up, attaches the enable, run a ground to here, attach that, that's it. Then you don't have to do anything. Then you don't have to push this button anymore. That's it, this solves the problem forever. If you're doing this board as a plug-in board on other modules, then I actually suggest you add that capacitor to the other board so that when you plug it, whichever board you plug in, like if you replace it, you can just plug in another board, you don't have to worry about it, you know, it just works. Of course you can always do over the air stuff. I do over the air updates and a lot of stuff there, so it's just a bit easier. But um, when you're doing, you know, USB cable stuff, putting that one microfarad capacitor on there solves a lot of problems. So these are some clone Brother P-Touch tape cartridges. I purchased some of these before and um, I actually had some damage. They've actually been impacted in post or something. Been, I don't know, like they've been stood on or run over the car or something. I don't know, but... <laughs> yeah, I needed some more. I was on my last roll. I just had to put the last cartridge in. And it's like, oh, I better get some more then. So I've got a few more. These are all white tape with black text, 12 millimeter size. Three of them all the same. There'll be links for these things down below. So make sure you check these out if you have a Brother P-Touch. So we've got Edmund 14 package. It's capacitors. Some people will be very happy about that. <laughs> Running joke. Okay, 150 microfarad, 50 volt axial capacitors. Just restocking. I like to get plenty of capacitors in stock because I end up replacing a lot of them. It's some more. Black on fluorescent green, 9mm. Black on white, 9mm. Black and white 9mm. So why did I get fluorescent green? I know I did buy one, I'm just trying to remember why I actually bought one. I think I was trying to figure something out. I, I don't know why I needed to buy it. I've forgotten. Yeah, I did intend to buy a fluorescent green one. Thought it might be handy, I don't know. Could be cool. Here's a box from eBay. I think I know what this is anyway. Well, looks like it's pretty well packaged. That's good. We have another box. This is why I use a relatively blunt round knife instead of an actual knife because then you don't damage things inside packages. You want to cut through whatever's inside it, you know. Oh my god. Really? Go away. You just preach to me. I was happy with them until then. Having religion into things. Alright. Religion, the biggest killer of people since the beginning of time. Is there actually anything in here? <laughs> it's like past the parcel, isn't it? <sighs> oh, come on, where's the. It's a bit on cut, I'll cut this in. They did a really good job pathetic it, I'll give them that much. 
Well, that was a lot of effort. So there you go, philosophy in practice, second edition. Well, calibration philosophy in practice is what it's actually called. By Fluke. Joseph, hello Joseph, if you're watching. Someone else featured this particular book on their channel, I don't remember who it was unfortunately. And it looked like it was pretty interesting as far as its concepts and what have you. Wow, look at that lot. I'd love to have one of them. Yeah, it's all about calibration and how to do stuff and accuracy specs and how to do the best measurements and all sorts of stuff like that. I thought it could be an interesting read. I'm self-taught electronics, so anything I've, I've learnt, I've taught myself by looking up on the internet or reading books and what have you, or just pure experience, experimenting and just seeing what works, what doesn't work, just like most other hobbyists do. So I'm self-taught, so there's lots of gaps in my knowledge, and so I wanted to get this book to try and fill some of those gaps in, because, you know, I'm doing this calibration, kind of testing and what have you. I thought this would be a quite an interesting thing. Statistical process control, I saw that just then. Yeah, I know a little bit about that. This covers lots and lots. Um, grounding, shielding, guarding, that's also quite an important one. Yeah. Many, many hours of reading in this. That's so fairly good condition. It's not perfect. This was not a cheap book. The person's video I saw, they said they, you know, you can get this book relatively cheaply if you wait around long enough. Well, I was waiting around for a little while and I didn't see any cheap ones. <laughs> so this is the cheapest one I could see. So I bought this one. It is still a ridiculous price. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it wasn't cheap. And I would have liked to have got it for, you know, fifty dollars less or something, but you know, yeah, well, you get it when you can. I thought it'd be a good read. So according to the page here, this was printed in 1994. Old, but very relevant for the gear that I work on. Last thing, the review item. So I'm going to give you a quick look at this. I think it will need assembly as well. So let's we'll have a quick look at it, figure out what it is. So there will be a review video for this thing. The name gives it away a little bit. Um, don't forget to check out my merch too. There'll be links in the YouTube page. Got cups and shirts and socks and caps and singlets and jumpers and I don't know, hoodies, whatever, I don't know. Lots of stuff, different designs. But this is a relevant one. Let's open this thing up. So this was sent to me at no cost, I should mention that as well. It's a sponsorship. Most of these are sponsorships. Because there's no way I could possibly afford to actually do all these review items if I had to pay for them. It's just not possible, I don't earn enough money from YouTube. You know, it's, I spend all money on buying bits of test equipment and mailbag stuff my, for things I actually need and want. Review things are sponsorships. I don't pay for these. Okay. There's another box in here. Let's get this out. That's a nice box, isn't it? Hmm. Gives it away now. Scanner. Hello, by the way. Yeah. It's got a pocket of my lights out, isn't it? Oh, really get in shot. Right, manual. The button there. Right, so this is basically a document scanner. This is going to be really hard to try and get in this shot. You can see the base here, and as the frame comes around, there's a head up here, which is a scanning head. I believe that's the right around. You've got some extra accessories and things like that, and a manual or something here. There's probably some software for it. Well, it will be software for it. I don't know if it works on a Mac or a PC. I know it works on a PC, but I don't know about Mac. So yes, watch out for the video for this. So this was a review item. I can't remember if I contacted them or whether they contacted me. I can't remember which way around it was. I could have contacted them asking if I could do one. Because I saw, I think it's Curious Mark, had one of these. And it looked really impressive. And I thought, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need for doing manuals for bits of gear I'm working on. So if I've got a piece of test gear, and I've got a physical manual for it, but there's no electronic manual. I always like to have electronic manuals. I could use this thing to scan the manual and, you know, share it with people. You know, so this is not just for me to get a free piece of gear. This will allow me to share manuals with other people which may not be out there already. I know there are some manuals I've got which aren't available on the internet. I could use this to scan those manuals in, create an OCR, like a, a searchable PDF of those manuals, and share them online. You know, there's a KO44B website and XDevs and places like that. That's what I've got this for, but I'll be doing a review video on this, obviously. So we'll get to that. Make sure that if you're interested in this, you subscribe and click the bell icon. You need to ring the bell. 
So we need to have a low for this as well, because um, you know sponsorship thing. They also want to get some sales out of it, whether or publicity, or whatever it may be. So there have been links for this as well down below in the description. There's be a playlist here to watch, which I think you should watch. There's a playlist here, YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe here right by my face, and over here is a Patreon link if you want to support the channel. Donate each month. A small amount could be a couple of dollars, and it helps to support the channel, help me to buy things with test gear, and our bag stuff, and what have you. Bye.